Chapter 6, Episode 1 Darkness of the Harvest Festival Illustration by Mimin November 1147 arrived. Falma is used to going back and forth between the university and the pharmacy and is well received by Ellen and the students in lectures, practicals, and patient examinations. On this day, Falma was giving a lecture at the university and Ellen and the part-time pharmacist were in charge of the pharmacy. Foo off, let's take a break. A stretched Ellen suddenly asked Lot who was busily folding the medicine bag. Speaking of next week's Harvest Festival show Jin Sai, La Chan will also come, right? Hey, why don't we meet up there too? Ellen shows Lot the Thanksgiving Festival brochure, and Lot begins to read the outline of the event in earnest. Huh? I've never heard of that before. 1147 Thanksgiving Day? At the university. That's right. Our university is conservative, so we have a Thanksgiving ceremony every three years. It looks like we're going to do it again this year. Weren't you invited by Falma Kuhn? Thanksgiving is a festival to express gratitude to the patron deity and is held on a global scale for almost a week every three years. During this time, various events such as masquerade balls and parades are held around the world to worship patron deities. The event was also to be held at Imperial Medical College. I wasn't invited. Lot replied with a somber depression. That's strange, I wonder if I forgot to invite you. Everyone can come, including family and friends. Father and mother are coming, so I'm thinking of taking Sophie. La Chan, come too, hey, why don't you come to when you're off? Ellen invited her part-time pharmacists and Selston Rebecca showed interest. I think the kids will be happy. Absolutely. And when Selst replied, Rebecca said, I'm always free, so I want to go. As she said something painful, Ellen tapped Rebecca on the shoulder to encourage her. Oh, Rebecca Chan. Is it like the owner? Rebecca groaned a careless word. Oh no, no, Falma Kuhn is too tight. I plan to play, not work. Ellen doubts whether Falma plays like a boy his age. Wow, please take me too, Eleanor Sama. Is Sophie Chan coming too? How is Sophie Chan doing? Has she grown up? Lately, Ellen hasn't taken Sophie to the pharmacy because she's busy, so I don't see her face. She's not growing up so fast. But she's full of energy, and I think Sophie will be happy to meet La Chan. La looks at the brochure and asks Ellen with twinkling eyes. What kind of candy store or restaurant is this? I thought La Chan would definitely keep an eye on that. Apparently, Fal Makun said at the faculty meeting that it would be nice to open a store. As expected of Falma Sama, it's the candy store at parties. Don't you think so, Rebecca Sama? Wow, I don't know. Rebecca disagreed. It's already La Chan. I wonder if this kind of event was the Shishin Sai Festival. The main event is the masked ball, right? Ellen nodded. Thanksgiving Day was coming quickly. On the day of the festival, Falma went to the university early in the morning with Bruno, probably because he was on the board of the festival. At San Fluv Imperial College of Medicine, lively music from the school band echoed across the campus and the school building was magnificently decorated. Thousands of visitors from outside the university walked through the resurrected San Fluv Imperial College of Medicine this year, enjoying the great campus events. Students and visitors wearing colorful masks started to gather around the main venue and the judging. There are some people dancing at the big festival which is held every three years. Eleanor Sama, where are you? In such a beautiful atmosphere, Lot came to the meeting place with Ellen. And soon found Ellen surrounded by students who seemed to be her students chatting with them. Ellen is wearing a mask but Lot is recognizable by her long silver hair and extraordinary style. And she was pushing a magnificently decorated baby carriage. This is Lot Chan, right? I didn't know, where did you buy that mask? Ellen noticed and called out to Lot. Lot was wearing a full mask, one with cat-shaped ears. Exquisite are the decorative motifs of the colorful glass. He he, I designed it and it was made by a yard craftsman I get along with. What do you think? It's cute, isn't it? The pink dress is nice, too. 
Ellen's mask is an eye mask type that only covers the area around the eyes and the butterfly design is modern and adorable. Sophie is sleeping now. I don't think she will wake up for a while. When Ellen took the hollow out of the stroller, there was Sophie napping with a peaceful sleeping face. Gradually, her baby-like appearance faded and she became more adorable. Wow, Sophie. You've grown so much. By the way, La Chan, what did Fal Makun say this morning? No, you look busy. Elian or Sama, please listen to me, in the end I wasn't invited by Falma Sama. Is it okay for me to come to the Harvest Festival? Eh? I asked Fal Makun, but he said he invited La Chan to the pharmacy. I wonder if he's misunderstanding something. Falma attended the thank you ceremony along with President Bruno and the professor at the judging stage. Ah, Falma Sama. Even though Lot waved her hand, Falma didn't seem to notice. Falma Kuhn is a member of the Thanksgiving Festival Executive Committee. He may not have time to relax with us because he's busy with operations. Let's go around. Yes. The area around the main venue is lined with booths filled with the smell of food and alcohol is being sold. Normally, drinking alcohol outdoors is prohibited, but on this particular day, it seems like an irresponsibility. Lot buys the candy she is looking for, and Ellen talks to the students and shows Lot around campus. I also got into the incognito mode of Admiral Jean. Melody seems to have been invited as a guest, so she was led by Bruno and sat in the guest seat. On the special stage. There were dedication dance for each of the patron deities associated with the Zijin Festival, mini-games, talk shows, magic tricks, etc., and they received enthusiastic cheers from the audience. This is a fun festival. While Lot comforted the awakened Sophie, she fully enjoyed the atmosphere of the festival. Because Falma Kuhn has made several interesting suggestions. Eleanor Sama, would you like something to drink? I'm thirsty, so I'm going to buy something. Is that so? I'd like some refreshing juice, please. Lot disappeared happily. L, are you here? At the time Lot went to buy a drink, Falma, accompanied by a girl, called out to Ellen in the audience. Falma Kuhn. Oh, what about this one? The girl is also wearing a mask, so Ellen doesn't know who she's walking with. Oh, the set is me. Taking off the full mask, Emmerich's youngest sister appeared. Falma was surprised to see her and murmured softly. What about Lot? He? Ellen did not miss his careless words. Immediately guessing why Falma said that, she whispered in Falma's ear so Emmerich's sister wouldn't hear. Is that Falma Kuhn? Maybe you mistook Lot for me. Did you invite her to the pharmacy? Falma invited Emmerich's youngest sister, not Lot. What the hell are you doing? Didn't you look Lot Chan in the face and invite her? I can't tell La Chan from your little sister. Ah, I messed up. Falma was also slightly depressed as she apologized that it must have been empty. Lot, who had gone there to buy drinks, came back. When Lot heard Ellen's story, her eyes widened. Voice face, which one? Falma thought hard about confusing Lot and Emmerich's sisters just because they looked alike. No, you guys really do look alike, your voice and your face. After that, Thelma was quizzed on who was who by Lot and Emmerich's younger sisters. I'm sorry, I don't know either. I can't talk about Thelma Kuhn. Both Thelma and Ellen missed about one of three questions if they didn't face each other. Thelma Sama Tilda, Eleanor Sama Tilda. Was it on purpose? Was it intentional? I'm sorry. Thelma seriously apologized but Lot realized it was a misunderstanding and regained her composure. Afterwards, I met Rebecca, a part-time pharmacist who seemed to have too much free time. Ellen exchanged words with Rebecca. Rebecca Chan, you came after all. Um, I've been trying to invite someone I'm interested in. But I'm bored. Everyone felt that it was a story not to be heard deeply. That's right. Rebecca blushed and was embarrassed to realize that people around her cared. Speaking of which, how is Mr. Eugen doing? Falma asked Emmerich's younger sister how her brother was doing. If you're my brother, go over there. 
As Falma and the others looked in the direction the younger sister was pointing, a young man was dancing vigorously in the dance room, attracting attention. Huh? Is that Mr. Eugen? Ellen put on her glasses. I got it wrong. Eugen, who received gene therapy and calmed down his daily life again, lost his introverted personality and became completely cheerful and happy, his sister said happily. People don't change. Foo-foo, exactly. My brother said it was like being born again. Then I wanted to spread that joy. You're about to explode. Falma quietly added a word. Genetically, it's like a rebirth. Thanks for today, I'm going home with my brother. Take care. Shortly after the sweaty Eugene and his sister left smoke rose into the air. Oh, what's going on? It smells like burning, and it's smoke too. Lot, who has a good nose quickly noticed the change. It seemed that the tent of the barn that treated the fire was on fire. Someone. Isn't there a wizard for water attributes? I hear a voice calling for help. It's a fire. I'll go. Oh no. I'll put out the fire too. I'll be right back, so La Chan, just look at Sophie. Falma ran to the source of the fire, and Aren left Sophie in his care, drew his staff and ran away. And Lot and Rebecca took care of Sophie's stroller. Rebecca Sama was a wind attribute, wasn't she? I'm not very good at divine arts. While Rebecca and Lot were talking, someone attacked Rebecca from behind and knocked her to the ground. Kia. Lot tried to scream, but he was hit in the side, his mouth was blocked, and he was wrapped around his back and strangled. The attackers are a trio of men, and Sophie is being held down by one of the large men. If you make such a fuss, I'll kill them all. Hey, who are you? Shame on you. Rebecca stood up and drew her wand trembling. However, Sophie and Lot were hostages and could not be attacked. The frightened Rebecca was attacked by one of the men from a storm. As the commotion grew, one man released a wall of fog, and Rebecca dispelled the smoke with wind magic while the men fled. T it's heavy. Left behind, Rebecca turned pale and seemed to be in a dazed state. La Chan. What's wrong? Ellen, who had returned, was helping Lot, who was crouching down, holding her side. A. Elian or Sama. Sophie Chan. I'm sorry, what happened? Rebecca also apologized as Lot came forward in confusion. Dear Eleanor, I was attacked by men from behind. Lot and Rebecca talk about the attack and the men's clothes. Okay. I don't think you went that far. I will bring Sophie back and punish her. So if Falma Kuhn comes back let me know and contact the guards. You should go home. Don't do it. Look around. Ellen gently took their hands and ran off after saying that as if to lock them up. Ah. Please wait. Eleanor Sama. Elian or Sama is strong, so you're not afraid of three people? What should we do? While Lot and Rebecca were panicking, Falma returned, apparently having taken care of Boya. Falma, Sama. This is serious. Sophie Chan and Elian or Sama. Ellen found an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of the Imperial City. I wish I hadn't come alone. I gasp and prepare my stick in front of the iron door. Ellen tracked her with something called a divine power sonding needle. It is like a compass that measures divine power, and if you remember the divine power of a person you want to explore in the probe needle, it will show the direction of that divine power. As Sophie is quickly wandering and hiding in the mansion, Ellen ordered the expensive tools and used them in her daily search. The Great Water Hammer, Le Gros Marteau de Lo. She confirms that Sophie's presence is far from the door, immediately destroys the door with divine arts and enters. The warehouse floor is flooded with Ellen's magic. Ellen immediately yells at the men inside. I found you, kidnapper. Give me back. How do you know this place? The men were surprised to suddenly be showered with advanced divine arts and seemed annoyed. I know what I know. As Ellen entered the camp and looked around at all the nooks and crannies, scrap wood lay scattered here and there in the spacious room. In the corner, on an abandoned table, a blanket was spread out, and Sophie appeared to be sleeping on it. Next to Sophie, another kidnapped boy was gagged, handcuffed, and rolled onto the floor. Sophie, are you all right? Answer me. Oren calls out to Sophie, but Sophie does not answer. 
The boy seemed to be asleep too. What's going to happen? Because I made you drink oval grass. Oval grass. It is a traditional sleeping potion made by decocting sleeping herbs and has been used for a long time. However, after Thelma discovered that it contained narcotic ingredients and was extremely poisonous, it was banned from use in the imperial capital and disposed of by the Empress's imperial decree. It is no longer easy to obtain in the Empire. But abroad, it's a different story. You guys aren't nobles of the Empire, are you? HMPH, I gave you unnecessary information. The men are also whipping out their wands because they don't want to miss Ellen. It looks like it's going to be a divine one-on-one -on -one fight. Are you a rogue in this land? There are many nobles who give high prizes to children with curiosity attributes. Recently, several orphans without attributes were found in the imperial capital. Another man continues. I'm an abandoned child anyway, do you care if I kidnap what I threw away? As Ellen listens to the story, it seems to be a dark group of lesser nobles kidnapping and trading children with rare divine attributes. I won't let that happen. Sophie Chan is my precious little sister, I will treat you all together. Are they all included in the account? The door on the other side of the warehouse opened and several more men entered from behind, each carrying a stick. While facing ten miscreants, Ellen takes the lead and hits the defenses. Water Sanctuary, Sanctuary de Lo. It is like a water barrier that loses the power of divine arts within a certain area. By surrounding Ellen with a large sanctuary, attacks on Ellen are prevented. Since Ellen used a divine ability, the men also set it up. Ellen could not hear the speech of the men chanting the divine ability. There is no choice but to judge based on the initial movement and deal with it. Lingling lingling. As the man sings the activation chant in an unintelligible language, Aran is attacked from the front and back by fire arrows. Times 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 time. Next comes a blast of wind. These attacks were barely nullified in Ellen's water reserve but their power was considerable. W what? Since chanting can be done in any language as long as the system of technique is sound, Ellen is unable to distinguish between the divine techniques and is forced to fight back. The game of water, judo. Ellen uses water cannonballs in all directions, giving direction with a single swing of her walking stick. Some of the shots fired hit the men, who were thrown against the warehouse wall and knocked unconscious. However, the pyromancer deployed a wall of flame and the power of the second shot was weakened. Aran was hit by a vacuum blade on his leg and the laceration bled. Ellen loses her balance in pain and falls to the ground on her knees. Not yet. As Ellen looked up to get up, a horrible object jumped into her field of vision. It's a muzzle. No. Ellen's face contorted in despair. The sniper has Ellen in his sights. The moment you sing the activation chant, you'll be shot and finished. Even a mage like Ellen can't beat the speed of a bullet. A person with a stick is a weapon. Aren't you ashamed? No matter what happens, it's over. Take your time and die before it becomes a fuss. The man was about to pull the trigger. Wait. A voice echoed through the large warehouse. A boy enters through the door of a destroyed warehouse. Sue. Falma Coon. Where did this child come from? Some of the men pointed their wands at Falma and assumed a fighting stance. Please ignore them. You're looking for a magic user with a rare attribute, aren't you? Falma approached the men and appealed that he was unarmed. Huh? What can a kid like you do? Can you use magic with strange attributes? Men laughed. Usable. Show me the evidence. It seems Falma caught the men's attention when he used a certain trick between his fingers to discharge electricity. Her release is a condition. If she doesn't drink, I will never use divine arts again. It's okay. The men slowly approached Falma and placed steel handcuffs on him. Ellen is released. Falma was wrapped around the handcuffs with a cursed cloth that sealed divine arts. Ellen was also handcuffed and kicked to the ground. Falma was then pulled in front of the wagon prepared outside the warehouse and pushed into a steel box on the platform. Along with the kidnapped Sophie and the boy. Falma Kuhn, Sophie. 
Ellen screams as she watches the carriage carrying the two drive away. Don't shout. Be quiet. Ellen was hit in the head with a blunt instrument and fell to the ground. It was not until evening that the guards of the Imperial Capital found Ellen unconscious in the warehouse and took her in a carriage to the apothecary. Are you safe, Ellen or Sama? Rebecca and Roger, who were giving Ellen first aid, looked at Ellen's face. Ellen has no glasses and cannot see, and her eyesight is unreliable. La was also in tears and accompanied Ellen closely. I'm fine, Sophie Chan and Falma Kuhn were kidnapped, and there were other children who were kidnapped. It's a foreign criminal organization. The military police and the Imperial Knights. Having received a report from the Imperial Medical College, have locked down the entire Imperial capital and are searching for the missing person and the kidnapper with several hundred people. During the investigation, Ellen was discovered. Falma Sama. Lot's tragic cry echoed outside the pharmacy. Then Lot saw a figure coming from across the street. Called. Along with such a voice, Thelma walked back. While holding the peacefully sleeping Sophie in her arms. Huh? Why did you come back? As if nothing had happened, Thelma returned on foot with Sophie in her arms. As if returning from a tour. The pharmacy staff rushed down the stairs with cheerful voices to greet Thelma. I'm glad. You were safe. Yes, there were many kidnapped children, so I released them all. Everyone who was there was in a state where they couldn't close their mouths. How did you escape from that steel cage? Well, the cage, the shackles and the cloth are all made of simple materials, so they disappear. In front of the part-time pharmacists, Falma spoke vaguely. What? With Falma's ability to erase material, it would be as if he didn't exist even if he was put in several cages. Erase the iron copper on cellulose and he's always free. I can't tie you up with normal materials. Don't worry the next time I get caught. Falma Ellen explained with a cool face. What's wrong? Falma pretended to have been caught intentionally. Behind the trafficking route of non-attribute Divine Arts users involving dozens of Divine Arts users and received a list of trafficking customers. Then he explained that he easily escaped from the cage, defeated and tied up all the perpetrators, blocked their nerves and forced his way back into the military police. The abducted children are said to have returned safely to the orphanage in the Imperial City. Yes, it is Sophie. She wasn't hurt. Aaron took Sophie from Falma's hand and hugged her affectionately. Ah, Sophie Chan. It was really, really good. Lot also can't stop crying over her safe return. Aaron's important family, even if they're not related by blood. Falma added treatment for Aaron's injuries. The burns were beginning to heat up, so I poured divine power into Ellen and treated her to increase her ability to heal the wounds. By the way, who are the kidnappers? I punished you a bit so you can never use Divine Arts again. Falma laughed innocently. No one questioned what he had done. The next day, according to Falma, the remnants of a foreign criminal group were arrested by the military police of the Imperial Capital in a single pass. With this opportunity, the orphans of Divine Art users with unusual attributes were to be even more generously protected by the Empress Orders.